Today, the AFN crew hunt snapper across Port Phillip Bay before heading north to chase long-tailed tuna in Queensland. Finding and then positioning around schooled fish is a key aspect to catching a few. The AFN team now head to Melbourne to chase bay snapper using some specialised anchoring equipment. So many fish are anchoring and using baits to catch their fish these days. Keys to success when you're doing that is first finding a fish and then putting your boat in prime position. So anchoring is a major skill when you're doing that and we're here today with an expert. His job is to take people catch fish for them and to do that he has to position a boat again and again on the right spot. So Mitch from Online Fishing Charters, we're in his backyard today, he's going to hopefully catch a snapper. Learn how to anchor, learn how to find them. Hang around because I reckon we're in for a bit of fun mate. Hopefully, let's go. We're doing a bit of prospecting at the moment which means obviously Mitch has got several of his marks which are in many cases a little bit of harder bottom out in a big bay situation. The sort of places which attract a few fish and the key is now covering as much of that area, keeping those eyes glued to the sand as okay. So a bit of stuff coming up there now. What do you call that Mitch? Call that more smaller fish like undersized snapper. Um, no real discrete marks in there. Like this one here is probably a better fish off the back of there. It's more of one lone fish but yeah, the rest would just be all small undersized stuff. Yep, okay, so not, not too excited about stuff like that at the no. moment. Sort of thing that makes Mitch want to stop and chase snapper, what do you want to see? Uh, more of those discrete marks, sort of one, two, three, four fish on their own. Rodeo Nigel, we just found, found some fish here, so we're gonna hit our weigh point, make a mark just there. Yep. Put our crosshairs on the screen, up on over our mark, hit the go to button, and that brings up distance to that destination or distance to that mark, how far away we are. Yes. So we're gonna turn and go upwind or up current. Out here we don't have a lot of current, so today we're just gonna be facing the boat into the wind. Yep. You can see now we're 50 metres away from that spot where we mark those fish. So we've got a little bit of swell from the leftover westerly, so we'll go just a bit on an angle, and about 13 metres, so we'll push up about 20, 30 metres into the, into the wind. And then once we get there, so now we're 30 metres up. Just put the boat in reverse. Let it down. Reason for the reverse being let all that anchor chain, anchor sort of spread out from itself. If we just put the boat in neutral, the anchor and the chain will all just sit up in a big pile. It'll all get tangled. So we don't want free fall? Nah. We're obviously, you know, we're in 15 metres of water here. Yep. And I noticed a fair bit of chain went out of the front of the boat. Yep. What's your sort of rule of thumb and how much chain for size of boat? Yep, so you at least want your length of boat in chain. So if you've yep. got a seven metre boat, you at least want seven metres of chain. Like on this, I run 12 metres. Yep. Want to get ourselves 10 metres away at least from where we saw those fish. So we want to be 10 metres to zero metres away. Yep, cool. I guess another, another thing you see a lot of guys do too is they, they find this spot they want to fish on and then they try and sit right on top of the fish yep. and drop their anchor chain and it's, it's not going to hold particularly where you start getting different ground and stronger current and stuff like that so you've obviously gone 15 meters of water we've yep. gone 30 to 40 meters away from our spot yep and not only that like if you're fishing in a place with a lot of current and you find fish and you yep. hit your waypoint and you just run up the front and drop your anchor you're still going you might be going still downwind or down current so your anchor is going to go the rope's going to go up underneath your boat and it can get wrapped around your motor or your prop and if it's rough that's yep. pretty much disaster you end up with waves filling your boat up because yep. it's facing backwards we will wear yeah 13 14 meters straight out the back we've got where our fish were let out a bit of burly and stuff not only that like on the screen here we're marking a few fish now so cool. yeah it's gonna be good he goes pretty well that stuff mate if you'd failed that task i was gonna go find another charter operator anyway <laughs> let's go fishing let's go catch some fish We're using a variety of fish baits at the moment. We made yep. obviously some soft ones, but also the hardy ones like your whiting yep. to survive the pickers and draw the attention of some bigger fish. But it sometimes comes with a few rigging considerations. Show yes. us how you do it. 
So on this one we've got a set of snailed hooks. Put your first hook in the bottom of the bait, like that. Roll him over, put our second hook on the other side, further towards the tail in this situation. Make sure there's no scales on the hook points. And then just a couple of half hitches. One first one round the hook, another one about halfway up, and one right up at the tail. That's about it, runs down to that small ball sinker there. Ideal, and we're throwing that as far as we can away from the boat. Let out a, a chunk of, of loose line, line and yep. it's gonna really subtly drift, drift on down and find a rest on the bottom half the time when the fish are active. They'll eat it on the way down. Yeah, it won't even get to the bottom. Always gonna smooch along and suck that in. Yes. And away we go, and hopefully we hit the sound of a drag gun soon. work, Mitch. Didn't take too long, mate. Don't think it's a massive one, yeah, it's a fish. It's right. oh, awesome. First bay snapper for the afternoon. Key to catching fish is all about finding them and then fine tuning, getting your boat and you in the right position to put out a bait or a lure. The reason we caught one so quickly is Mitch did his job to the T. He's found us fish and he's put us right onto them. What a lovely start. On you, Mitch. Is. We've got to our spot, anchor it up, put a bit of burley out, throwing our baits out. This one's just an un unweighted bait. We've got real small like pea sinker down to a couple of 5-0 suicide hooks. I don't think this is a massive fish, but every one of them counts, I suppose. Yeah, exactly right. It's all fun and games. Ooh. I can see a bit of colour there, mate. Yeah, exactly. He's alright, actually. He's alright. Yep. Beautiful. There we go. It's the, the famous spot X of Mitch's. 30 metres ahead of us, we've got our anchor rope laid out into the wind. But mate, in terms of making anchoring effective and enjoyable, because that's how it should be, I think, if you want to get good at it, three key tools. Definitely sounder, GPS, and the winch. Use sounder, find our fish, locate them, then hit waypoint on the GPS, and we know where we're always going to be. And then, yeah, the winch, the winch just makes it so easy to be able to just press a button and drop otherwise like 25, 30 kilos of anchor and chain, which you have to pull up every single time. Yep. Considering that it's just so easy, just hit a switch and it's up or it's down. It's um, when you're sounding around, you might anchor up on one spot. And there's not a lot of fish there or you've seen a lot of fish and they're not hungry. Have to pick up, move around again and again and again. Some days like we move up 10 times a charter, so five hour session, you're moving every sort of half an hour sort of thing until you find those fish that are on the chew. So yeah, it makes it so easy. Well, mate, um, I was happy because there's only two of us on board and I thought I was going to be anchor boy for the day. <laughs> I was very happy when I saw some technology on the front and clicking buttons and anchors up, anchors down. Happy days. Yeah. Didn't even feel like there was a fish there at the start. A lot of loose line. Beautiful. There you go. Lightly weighted. Yes. Mate, we've got a mixture of souries, pillies and silver, silver whiting. whiting in action yeah. just to try and find what the flavour of the day is. So, you know, like obviously a really, really lightly weighted bait, small pea sinker and the old snood rig, a couple yep. of hooks. This time of year, like coming around December as well, you get a lot more of the smaller fish on the reef. Yep. So those whiting, souries, stuff like that, even if King George whiting's a lot hardier, stuff's a small fish, biting them up as much. Yep. Gives the bigger fish a bit of time to actually find your bait. Awesome. Right, mate. Well, they're starting to bite, and I know what happens here it gets a bit trendy when one bites. It's yes. a good chance you're going to catch another one, so we're going to, uh, he's going to make a beautiful barbecue for dinner tonight, and uh, Pull the hooks out. time to go and catch another one. Yeah, I reckon so. Rightio, so we'll go through the type of anchor and chain and everything we're running on this particular boat. Up the front, we've got a 30-pound Lone Star Marine mud magnet, or more commonly known as a plough anchor. Connected to that, we've got 12 mil chain and 10 meters of it up to our rope. It's pretty simple to use. We've got an isolator switch down here. We'll push that in and now our anchor won't work. Isolates the power. As soon as we push that in, we've got power to our switch. So pretty much up is up, down is down. It's about all there is to it. In our boat, we've chosen a Lone Star Marine winch to use just for the quality and the power. We're using quite a big anchor and quite a lot of chain. 
So we need something with the power to lift it up and down, up and down all day long. Sort of mixed our approaches. We've got some Paternoster rigs on the bottom and we're throwing floaters out, which by that I mean really lightly weighted bait. So we've got our bases covered. And if you did this in any of the snapper waters around Australia, you'd catch them doing this. Keep a couple of baits close to the bottom, a couple slowly drifting through the water yeah, column. Yeah, that rolled there, Nigel. Bit of burly. You'll catch them wherever. Oh, yeah. That's a nice That's fish got, on that, that one, has I got some gut. Yeah. You always just be patient on fish like this. There's not a lot of structure down there for them to do you on. Biggest threat is a drag that's too tight and popping a line or a hook getting spat. This means you just want to use your drag, the medium to soft drag, let the rod do its work. Try and coax the fish up towards the net. It's <laughs> playing up a bit. Oh, that's a lot of fun. Good trick with your net jobs is let your fish be subdued, get the net in the water, and then just slowly lead that head into the net. You don't want nets getting thrown at fish because sometimes they trap hooks and allow fish to spit those hooks out. There you go, beautiful fish, mate. Look at that in the Arvo light. I can see why you like catching them, Mitch. We all like them for a reason, mate. They're aggressive, they eat well. You saw how that fish took off. <laughs> Hit it like a ton of bricks. Beautiful. And once it's on a whiting head. Mate, once again, too, the benefit of obviously, you know, you, you've, you've sounded your ground, you've searched them out, found your patch of fish, and, you know, we looked at a few and I went, why aren't you stopping at those? You said, no, no, I'm gonna, I want the right sound. We found it, yep. saw consistently good arches in amongst it, and then you put us right on the spot. And after that, a bit of good technique, and away you go. The recipe of fishing, you get it right, and you're in for fun. That being said, mate, the sun is getting a bit low, and I reckon the big ones might come on. Tell Mitch is burly starting to work because I reckon I threw that one down. Down the burly trail, good 30, 40 metres behind the boat. Put it in the rod holder, of which I've got plenty to choose from on Mitch's boat. I reckon I was just getting comfortable in the way we went. So we're getting active. And we could be in for some fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Good fish, didn't they? You're getting bigger. Nice fish, Beautiful mate. Beautiful fish. There's a hook on the other side there. Always a word of warning when you're using a snelled rig like this, a couple of hooks. You grab a fish and you've got to be wary there's always another hook. <laughs> on the other side. There's an afternoon with the boys from Online Fishing Charters giving us what I reckon are great tips. Doesn't matter where you fish. At the moment we're in Port Phillip Bay, which is a renowned snapper fishery. I come from Queensland and up there, mate, we use exactly the same techniques for yep. trying to find your fish. Don't necessarily start fishing until you know the fish are there and then get your boat in the right spot. Definitely. Get it right and win for fun. Whew. Long tail tuna are tough battlers and often hard to tempt. Nigel Webster and Adrian Lindsay test their skills against the tuna off Queensland's Fraser Island. Sorry, made it too. Big barrel came out. Yeah, you got to catch one there. There you go. Get away. Go, dude. Oh, look at him. I'm just staying there as well. Coming under you. Oh, thanks for that. Just take a big right wind to the left temple. Using a Wilson blade and tail. Heavy stick for this. Just perfectly weighted for casting to these long tails. Nice light componentry, plenty of strength in it. Nice soft tip to hide those head shakes so we don't throw hooks free. Plenty of grunt in them. You can really get stuck into fish on these. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. See colour over there, Adrian? Yep. 
hot. Aren't they a nice fish? Look at these. The powerhouses, these things, they're made for speed. It's like hooking up to heat seeking missiles. There you go, like absolute freight trains. They're made for speed. And they're dogged, they just don't give up. So if there's any, you want to test your tackle, bring it out on the long tails. <laughs> Had a whole lot of fun. They're a tricky fish to catch some days. They can be really shy. I guess that's a challenge in catching them. Just trying to work out how to catch them on any given day because they change their mood every day, these things, I reckon. What we're trying to do with these is get way ahead of these fish. They are feeding into the wind, but they're still quite shy. Anytime we got too close to them with the boat, the schools went down and they're hard to find again, but we got far enough ahead of them, sat up wind of them, turned all the engines off, and just sat waiting for them to come to us. As soon as they were within cast range, we're casting little five inch soft plastics at them and just twitching them through the school. It's, it's probably a, a tiny bit too big because we've seen a lot of the bait fish that they're feeding on, but it's obviously just close enough for them to think I'll have that for dinner. This guy thought he was having this for dinner. He got a little bit of a surprise because there's a bit of a sharp bit in it that's still holding on. If you don't want to come out and test yourself out spin-wise on these long tails, or a lot of offshore species for that matter, haven't, it's nice having a rod with a little bit of butt length in it. These guys got really nice short core grips, so they're really light. There's lots of sensitivity in them. But the butt's long enough that I can stick it under my armpit just to give me that extra leverage so it doesn't wear me out in a fight like this one. Then you'll notice the rest of the componentry, single foot guides, it's all nice and light. These rods weigh next to nothing, but they pack plenty of punch, which means you can chase some big speedsters in them and you're not going to tie yourself out in a, a fairly standard day's fishing. One thing you do want to be careful of, particularly fighting long tails, is not to high stick rods. By that I mean lift it up, lift the base of it vertical when the fish is sitting underneath you. These graphite rods got a bit of a critical breaking curve that many of us have found out the hard way. And if you exceed it, by that I mean the rod that the bottom is, is, too, is vertical and the tip's trying to go straight the opposite direction. I tend to go like a snapper and it all ends in tears. A little trick, you can get into a trap with long tails if they can get under the boat, they just like to stay there. If you do find your dog in and out for too long with them straight down, get on the petrol and just drive it out a little bit, get, get a bit more line angle on the rod and you'll tend to find it pushes them up to surface. But heaps easier to wear out when they're up close to surface and if they're sitting under your boat just using their whole body against you. Well done. There's one of the speedsters of the oceans. They're incredibly heavy for their size, which just makes them hard to wind in, but they're also deceptive. You see the size of the fish in the water. He's not an animal by long tail standards. They get a lot bigger than this. But they all make you puff. They fight hard and they test out your gear. This guy back to join his mates. See ya. Beautiful. Let's go have another crack. It's probably about Adrian's turn, I reckon. I missed a few, he's, he's feeling it at the moment. I'm Adrian's feeling. cast next. <laughs> oh, yes! Just got to put one on the nose. There. Oh, yeah, yeah, on. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Long tail time. Oh yeah. Oh, smoking. <laughs> How fast do these things go? Oh. And back to me. Come as fast to you as they go away. Sometimes you'll be really ready to wind fast when they turn around and come back. She's heaps of rod angle on tuna. You can get them to change their direction if you want, because they're so fast that sometimes all you've got in your favour is to have a good drag and then use your rod to steer them around, particularly if you can't move too fast to chase them. You can run out of line on some good fish, but if you're good at learning to steer them, you can sort of keep them within the circle of your line range and they do respond to sideway pressure. I think nearly any fish will. If it's just constant pressure, they'll eventually turn to it. And what you can do is if they're running too far that way, sideways angle, and you bring them back towards you and you gain line. And same thing, they go that way, you bring them back the other way. What you're doing is you're keeping line on the reel and you're wearing the fish out. As I'm getting worn out pretty fast. <laughs> he hasn't woken up. Time to go. <sighs> to get these fish to bite today, we've been using half ounce to five eighth ounce jig heads and five inch length soft plastics. Our reels have been loaded with 30 pound braid. We're fishing a 40 pound leader just to help us knock these fish over a little bit quicker. A nice visual braid that helps you see where the fish are in the water. Certainly helps when you've got two anglers fishing and on top of that we've got about a, a two and a half metre leader. Keep in mind too if the fish get shy sometimes you can sometimes lengthen those leaders a little bit. It does help occasionally get those bites from long tails when they're a bit fussy. All in all the gear's pretty simple and the fishing's hectic. And I'm worn out. Here you go Adrian, this one's ready to go. These have been awesome. Right -o. Here you go then mate. You gotta make me tail another one of my own fish. Well if I can do mine, I'm sure you can do yours. As you can see from these, they just, they're made for speed. They're a torpedo underwater. They pull the pectoral fins back and off they go. They are just an absolute machine. Fantastic, a couple of. Oh, settle down tiger. Northern bluefin tuna, also known as long tails. Made a whole lot of fun, virtually sight fishing them, getting ahead it of them, is. chucking soft plastics in, light spin gear, or relative medium to heavyweight spin gear, and speedsters of the ocean. It's a good day to be out on the water. It let's is. Get a, let's get them back in, eh? Let's get them back in and. And I was going to say it's going to chase them all, but. but no. I'm it's getting worn out. <laughs> Visit us at afn.com.au Watch more on afntv.com.au And join us on our Facebook page, AFN Fishing and Outdoors.